hello, I'm Interpixel, welcome back to another video in this channel. Now, so, uh, it's going to be quite a uh, slightly different video in this channel, because today we're not going to be doing hard surface modelling, shading, sculpting, texture paint, UV editing. In fact, we're going to be doing something completely different, and it's called motion tracking. So, if you don't know what motion tracking is, it's basically where you get a camera um, and you film something in real life, and you track the points um, in of your footage in Blender and then you let the computer solve the camera motion so it can try and get a near to absolutely correct um, interpretation of what the camera was doing in real life and then you can add perspective and things in your scene and uh, 3D objects and so you can see there's quite a lot on the screen right now and maybe a bit overwhelmed but uh, let's start off in the middle here with our two videos. So this video here is the thing that we're going to be creating. And then the video down at the bottom. Uh, this was my raw footage that I used to track. And so you see this isn't the greatest camera solve. Because it slides off slightly at the end. But you can certainly see that it is sort of being integrated into real life. Another thing that uh, to point out is that you see there are shadows on my... Um, on my objects but you don't see a plane underneath and that's something that I'm going to be talking about because I actually rendered this in Eevee and not Cycles and if you know uh, there's um, a thing in Cycles called Shadow Catcher but it isn't an option in Eevee so you had to you have to do a bit of um, shading and it may be a bit complicated for beginners to do the Shadow Catcher so if you want to uh, leave that out then that's fine um, but it's not too hard to get something basically looking like Shadow Catcher, but you have to have a sun involved and uh, you have to have a specific strength, otherwise you'll be able to see the plane or the object that you're catching underneath. Right then, so now let's go, not to my beautiful logo or my uh, to my title, uh, just to say these two videos are going to be Google Drive, links in the description. If you want to uh, follow along on the, in the tutorial, or you just want to brag to your friends that you totally made this if you failed, obviously not. Um, so let's go to the good footage here. So the way to enable good footage is good resolutions. So resolution, uh, so how good your camera is. You can use a camera or uh, a phone is usually just as good as some cameras that are lying around. So usually uh, a phone is good. 1080p plus anything less than 1080p is going to be quite hard for the computer to track because when you zoom in you can quickly st uh, start to see the loss in quality and sometimes and the cameras and the computer is going to have a bit of a harder time uh, trying to track those things okay next one is good fps uh, so that's motion blur so if you have a lot of motion blur so i had a bit in this scene but i had 30 fps on my camera uh, my phone, so that's uh, really good. Uh, 30 FPS, even 60 FPS will get you a really good camera solve, but anything more than 20 FPS is fine, but um, any less than that wouldn't be um, very good for this tutorial because it, you're going to have a lot of motion blur, and unless you keep the camera virtually still, basically, um, it's going to be impossible to track. Okay, so number three, it is going to be contrast. Uh, organic points in footage, ideally things that you don't have to mask over in post. So if you don't know what I mean by that, basically you want to find a good area, so we're going to be tracking the floor, you need to find a good floor with lots of different uh, points, and I say organic by meaning things in real life um, and not things that you've ma uh, like put on the ground like masking tape or those things. Technically you could mask them out in post, but it's good to save time. So usually finding a nice um, specked floor with some weeds or some uh, little, maybe even bubble gum if you're in the streets, which obviously no one is anymore because of quarantine, but um, yeah, that sort of thing. And um, you, you don't want a plain floor because that's going to be impossible to track. Right, so uh, number three not being too dramatic with shake, unrealistic, harder to track. So basically, you don't, there are lots of um, CGI things that Captain Disillusion has bunked, literally all of them. <laughs> Link in the description for his channel, that's very interesting. 
lots of videos online saying it totally wasn't CGI. And um, the first mistake that they make is um, they shake the camera around loads. Uh, so it looks just unrealistic and like they're deliberately shaking it to make it look more like real life. Or they add a <laughs> like an After Effects um, shake if they're lazy. But um, so don't shake too much because it's going to be harder to track and it's just going to look unrealistic. It's going to break the effect that you're going to be creating. Right then, so uh, 4.5, so um, this is sort of 4, keep as much in frame as possible. So if you're going to be um, doing like a drone shot or something, then obviously this isn't something that you can do because you're probably going to go really fast. But if you are tracking this sort of thing, try and keep as much in frame as possible and just look at a few points in the middle of your scene um, and just see, um, just try and make them so they're always in the um, footage. So you see here the white specks in the middle, they always stayed in framed and that's the, that was the core um, tracking points because they tracked really well. Okay, and so last one is five, wide focal length. So that means zoom. So basically um, if you zoom in really far with your camera it's going to be harder to track um, because number one you don't have as much perspective um, number two it's probably going to shake a bit more and there's going to be more motion blur unless you have a 60 fps expensive DSLR which in that case I'm jealous <laughs> anyway so uh, yeah wide focal length because then you can get as much in frame as shot in possible so that is basically 4.5 but just saying a bit more so that's 5 right then so once you've got your good footage um, the, I, also, this is the one that I'm going to be using in this tutorial, links in description. Uh, you need to start tracking. And so um, I'm going to say this now and then we can get straight into the tutor tutorial. Um, Timestamp in the video if you want to go straight to Blender. Uh, it's up top left or down in the description if you want to go straight there. Right then, so good tracking. Select three points on floor and track. So usually you want to track one at a time. I'll show you how to make tracks in a second. So uh, track one of these white things in the middle. Maybe a good idea because they have not much um, mo not much motion blur and they're relatively uh, large, so it's going to be easier to track. Okay. So now, if if a good camera solve that I'll also talk about, then detect features start middle and end now you may be wondering what's detect features detect features is where blender automatically finds good contrasting uh, organic points in your scene and um, tracks them so you track so you um, detect features at the start middle and end and you track forwards uh, backwards and forwards and backwards if you know what i mean which you probably don't because i haven't showed you yet right uh, number three is filter tracks, less is more. So when I just started doing motion tracking, uh, I always thought if you had 100 tracks in your um, scene, then obviously you're going to get better results. Which it obviously isn't because Interpixel is dumb and he never realised anything about motion tracking until this very day. Um, so filter tracks uh, is another thing that Blender can do automatically. You can uh, do it yourself, but it's a bit easier to filter tracks if you have lots of tracks. So once you've got a billion gazillion tracks in your scene, um, ironically, you want to get rid of all of them, basically. <laughs> and so you want to filter tracks, have quite a low threshold that I'll show you in a sec, and then delete all of them. Because then when you, can, uh, when you do a good solve, it's the tech features in your scene, so you've got some quite a lot of good features. Usually they're around the centre, the ones that stay, and you should get a good camera track. Right, so when you, once you've done that, set up tracking scene when a uh, solve error of 0 0.7 or less, and I'll talk about that in a sec. So match lighting. So you see in this scene here, it wasn't very, I didn't light it very well, and that's because uh, of the shadow catcher, and I had to use the sun, but you could um, make an HDRI, do a panorama of your scene, or just sort of um, eyeball it. Uh, so there are lots of phone apps, free phone apps that you can create HDRIs. There's some good tutorials online that I'll link in the description and uh, in the end of the video. Right then, 
So once you've done that, set up Shadow Catcher. Cycle supported. So if you have a really fancy computer that can um, make, that can uh, render cycles uh, really quickly, then just use cycles, I guess. Um, but if you want to render an easy, which base in EV, which basically means seconds instead of hours, um, it, that should really be its real name. Not anyway. So you need to make a material for the shadow catcher in EV. And then finally, once you've done that, you are done! Render video as an FFmpeg video and MPEG4 encoding. Or whatever you want, but that's usually best settings. Right, so we've just gone over 11 minutes in this video, just talking about it. So you see it's going to be a little bit longer tutorial um, than usual, and a bit more chatty. Right then, so you want to hop over to Blender. And now, we want to uh, load in our footage and we want to create an image sequence. That's something that I probably should have um, uh, said <laughs> just before this. So the way to create an image sequence is you need to do Control N to create a new scene, and you want to go down to video editing, and don't save this one. Uh, so video editing only has two windows, video editing, obviously, and rendering. And this is all we're gonna need to create our image sequence. So what you want to do, go down in the description, download um, my video, or you can have your own video, and you can use the uh, the tips that I showed you, and then you just drag and drop it into your scene. And there we go. And now uh, you see it's slightly jerky, and that is because um, it's just usually quite jerky in the video editing. And so once you think, uh, you can also crop or uh, trim your timeline by just clicking on here and at the top uh, it will tell you how many frames it has so you can stop the um, video in the end frames uh, when it's at the end. So we don't need our audio here so you can go down to the sort of tealish um, strip and do X to erase the strip. And so we're just going to click on this, it says it has 139 frames so up in your um, output properties you can just go to end and you can change it to 139. Now there is one other thing and that is just to uh, do it as a PNG or some sort of image. You don't want anything larger than PNG um, and you want to turn the compression down to I would say 5%. So, that's, so you could do 0% but I've already um, done this so I don't want to do it again basically. Right then, so now you've got all of this, uh, you can just uh, make sure your frame rate is correct and your resolution and aspect ratio, and uh, you just need to render it. So um, choose a browse, uh, find good one. I'm just going to create a folder called image <laughs> image sequence. There we go. And I'm going to choose that, and in uh, what I'm going to call it is I'm going to call it frame and then I'm going to do an underscore now the reason why I do an underscore is that um, every frame will now have a number so it will be frame underscore zero zero one frame underscore zero zero two and so it's just um, a nice neat thing so we can go back and alter some frames if we want so then you click accept and you want to go uh, up to your samples in your out render properties turn it down to one because you're basically just pumping out a load of um, pictures and then do control F12 to um, render your animation so you see it's basically just a slowed down thing but what it's actually doing here is it's finding the frame it's rendering it as one sample because that's what we put it to and then it's just uh, putting it into our folder so um, I'll be back when this is finished. Okay, so there we go. Uh, now we've got all of our image sequences. We just want to create a new file. So what you can do is you can just do Control N, and we're going to be choosing VFX. So we don't need to save this. So you just click Don't Save. And now what we want to do, we have a lot of things here. So don't be overwhelmed. Uh, we just want to number one load in our image sequence. So you go to the um, place uh, where you did it. So I had it in I had it in image image sequences here, and then you just do Control A to select all of them, and you just bring them in like that. And there you go. You see, hopefully it should be 
working there we go nicely and you see it's sort of quite jerky but it doesn't have to be jerky um, and so you can go to set scene frames and prefetch just to make it uh, load in all properly and you can see at the top here when it's all opaque it means it's all loaded in so when you play it um, when you play it okay sometimes it doesn't work when you scroll through with your timeline you see it's all nicely done and you see um there is like um sort of whited out a little bit and there aren't many uh, there isn't as much highlights and stuff and that's because uh in i think blender 2.79 or 2.8 they changed the um color management settings to be as a default as filmic instead of standard and that's a long video that I could go into. Blender Guru has explained it really nicely on his channel. Also, at the end of the video, I'm going to forget all of these things that I'm going to link down in the description. Okay, so we just want to change our view transform to standard. And now you see we've got back our highlights. And I'm going to change our look to high contrast. So you see we get, so the computer can get much better results. Now with that, um, make sure your FPS is good. Okay, so now we are all ready to start tracking. Only took us, um, like 15 minutes. <laughs> right then, so uh, let's start making, adding some tracks. So number one, you just want to eyeball it, see where some good tracks are, and scroll through the footage to make sure they're always in shot. I think we're going to start off with the one in the background here, uh, that one there. So the way to add tracks is control click. Um, and so you want to zoom in to the one that you want to track. So it's this one. You can zoom in as far as you want, really. And you see now, uh, if you had 720p footage, um, this is going to be like twice as blurry and it's going to look really bad. So uh, 1080p plus, so that's proving my first point. Control click and you've got this box here. If you um, click N, or this may already be here, and you go down to track, you can see um, a preview of it in here so you know what the computer's looking at. Uh, so you can do S to scale and all of the normal things, apart from a new thing. So there we go. That looks good. You can do R to rotate. Usually I would keep it normal. And so there's one more thing that uh, I want to say before we start tracking. And that's called a search box. So if we do Alt S to reveal the search box, if we make this bigger, then the computer is going to be um, look. So basically, what the computer does is it looks around all of here, tries to find this specific image all the time. Sometimes distorts it so it's the same perspective. And if it goes out of this box here, so if this uh, if this track. So if this um, little white thing goes out of this box, the computer's going to say, sorry, can't find it. You haven't made the search box big enough. Well, it's not really, but you know what I mean. Um, so what you have to do is if that happens, you just make the search box bigger, but make sure it doesn't go over um, your uh, frame here. So you see it's going slightly over. Um, then it sometimes glitches up a bit. And this uh, changes where the search box is. So usually you just want to keep that at center so it's nicer. And I'm going to make the search box uh, as the default size like that. Right then, so now I'm going to talk about these tracking things. So you have track forwards, this one, until it gets stuck. Track one frame forwards. Track backwards until it gets stuck. And track one frame backwards. Uh, just to say, um, tracking backwards for some reason takes slightly longer. I'm really not sure why and quite a lot of... Um, blender people really don't understand either so if you happen to be one of the only people on earth who knows why apart from the blender um programmers uh then please comment in the description because i'm really confused so okay so scale up here and change your search box you can do alt s to uh, get rid of the search box if you want and you see there's this um yellow dot in the track thing here so if you move that onto the white thing so that's going to look better Right then, so um, do G to grab, you go like that, and now you can just start tracking. So um, so you just click on this, and there we go, it's tracked really nicely. Another thing to uh, check if it's tracked nicely is uh, there's a thing up here 
that's uh, locked to selection. So if you click on that, it's basically going to stay on that and everything around it's going to move around. So if it does get stuck here, uh, it will show in the track a sort of maroon purple. Uh, then you can just do G to grab and just put it back into position. There we go. So uh, track forwards. And you see it's gone to the end. So now if we scroll through our footage, you see it's sort of stabilised quite nicely. But then you see uh, it looks like it's starting to change where it tracks. Or is that just me? Okay, that's a pretty nice um, track, so that looks pretty cool. Uh, let's unlock this so we can make some more trackers. And we can do A to lock the track. Right then, now I'm going to choose one more in the foreground. Well, I say foreground, they're, bas they're basically all in the same place. I think I'm going to choose this uh, white dot here. So, control click, like that, to scale up. Alt S, make our, make our search box quite big. And literally just track forwards. Uh, you see you see it got stuck there. Where is our track? There we go, you can do numpad period uh, if you um, get stuck and you can't find your tracker. And just put it back into position. There we go. And just carry on tracking. There we go. And now let's lock it, zoom in a little bit, and see how it's tracked. Okay, so that's probably our best track yet. Apart from, for some reason it started at 6, and that's probably because uh, I was a derp and I started doing it at 6. So if that does happen, just click on the backwards one here, make sure it goes right up to frame 0. There we go. Uh, now let's have a go at this black one here. Let's see if black is a bit better. Make sure to unlock here. Let's see how this one does. I have a feeling it's not going to go as well. Make the search box a bit bigger. And track. Ooh, it actually tracked the whole way through, and I'm really surprised about that. Now, if you're not getting as good results, then really don't be worried. I've been doing this for a few weeks now, so it may take you quite a long to uh, grasp what sort of things you should be tracking and uh, that sort of thing. And don't get frustrated, and if you do, then it's just a matter of time before you get amazing looking results. So just bear that in mind, because sometimes you will get quite annoyed because nothing tracks and nothing works. Which is exactly how I felt when I started doing tracking, because I looked at other YouTube tutorials like Ian Hubert, and he's like, do this, do this, do this, and I'm like, oh, that's easy. And then I did it, and I'm like, hello darkness, my old friend. <laughs> so, um, let's scroll through here. Okay, that's tracked really nicely. So now we've got three uh, tracks on the ground. I'm going to add one more, and then we're going to do our thing called detect features. I think I'm going to do... Um, this one because it's sort of a parallelogram and no I'm really not sure I just think uh, I feel like I want to do this one actually I'm gonna do uh, this white one here make sure to unlock so you uh, don't get a bit confused scale up a little bit and scale the search box quite far up and track forwards there we go uh, click on the lock zoom in let's see how it's done okay that's done really nicely now this is the part where we do the detect features. Now you could do um, a few more and call it a day, but I like detecting features just so you can see what it is. So we may end up having no detect features at all, and we may just be using these four tracks. But uh, you need, I'd say about eight tracks uh, for a good camera solve. So let's go up to track here on this panel, and we're going to go down to detect features. So you can um, unlock this first, so you can zoom in and out. So you can change this threshold and stuff. Uh, I was, I had, these are right, these are my um, measurements. There we go. And now you click, um, now you've got all of these, you just click track forwards. You see it may take a bit longer than usual. And you see basically half of them are disappearing. And um, I'll show you how to lock those tracks so they don't mess up your camera solve in a second. So you see we also have this um, squiggly line thing down at the bottom and if we maximize this a bit more there we go. So if we make this a bit bigger like that and we can just turn it down by clicking on this thing here you see they're uh, following basically the same place as the other trackers. So you see barely any of them survived and uh, so we can just go through here like that 
Right then, so now we've got all of this, um, we're going to jump straight to the end and we're going to add a few more trackers. Like that, we're going to go to the end frame and we're going to do detect features as normal. And now we're going to click on the back one. So you see um, it does take a little longer, but uh, this time you can see down in the curves, it follows relatively the same tracks as uh, the ones that we did in the middle. And if that's happening and there's no weird stuff going around, uh, then that's going to be um, a really good camera solve. So you see uh, not many of them are left anymore. Barely any of them are actually. Uh, so you see there are these random spikes of these things. That means they're not tracking very well. So you can just click on them and X delete curve. And click on this one, this one, practically all of the ones that aren't following the track. So this one, this one, that's pretty good. But Blender can also do this automatically. And so the way you can do that is you can just go to solve, uh, click A to select all of them, and just go to clean up and click on filter tracks like that. Change the f threshold to however you want. Let's do five for the moment because that's only going to get all of the little ones. Um, the really well tracked ones are going to stay in. X, delete track. And now you see we only have four, which is amazing. So we're going to filter tracks, uh, make the threshold a bit um, larger. And now it says up down here, identified 83 problematic tracks. And you can just do X to delete all of those tracks. Uh, so now you've got that. We want to go to the very end. Click A, filter tracks. Uh, it says it's identified zero problematic tracks. So that's good. And now we just want to detect features in the middle. So go to track, detect features. And um, track forwards. and track backwards there we go and now you see we've got some nice trackers I think we missed some of them here we want to track these ones as well there we go and now we want to filter tracks in the middle let's say filter tracks X delete tracks and now you see we've got a nice clean curve on here and we've got some good ones that we can track with now the only problem is we don't have many at the side and um, so we may want to track maybe just a few at the side so let's just track this little thing down here let's say let's just do that oh dear it gets stuck uh, oh actually that goes off screen so we're gonna um, so if something goes off screen so uh, to any side of the screen you don't want that to mess up your camera solve do you and the way that you can um, make it so it's sort of locked in a way, so it's off the screen and it only gives its information up to the frame where you do this um, procedure. So you just click on clean frames, or clean tracks even, and then it's going to go like that. And now the reason why there aren't many around the sides is because they usually go out of shot. So let's try this little weed here, or whatever it is, maybe a bit of grass. I'm really not sure. Um, oh, we and then track backwards and forwards if you accidentally went to a different frame. <laughs> Whoops, the lazies. Uh, go to 32. Uh, and then go forwards. And uh, manually put it back if it goes wrong. Uh, manually put it back. This one doesn't seem to be having a very good day. Uh, lock tracks to do all of that and this is where the exciting part comes where you can use all of your data um, and uh, you can sort of stabilize your footage so this is a good way to see if your camera solve uh, is going to be good so you can click A control L to lock all of them and then click on this lock thing here and then when you um, play it's sort of almost stabilizing the footage and you can go a bit more advanced, go into a 2D stabilization and make it so it's even more stabilized, but that's for another video. Right then, so now we have all of these tracks. We're going to do uh, a few more things down here and then we're gonna solve our camera motion. Right, so we're gonna choose keyframe. Not really sure what that does. I think Blender uh, it automatically works out two keyframes uh, that the trackers follow, something like that. 
Um, I'm saying it as vague as possible so I don't get people commenting down below saying, that's not right. Um, and then we want to, uh, that's all good. Usually, uh, if you go to track here, um, motion model, I usually find uh, lock, uh, lock uh, much better than perspective because um, perspective allows the trackers to distort the tracks. So sometimes it gets uh, a bit too far and they distort until they're a line, literally. So uh, let's go to solve and we're just going to click solve camera motion. And this may take a little bit of time because we're doing it for the first time. So have a drink of water or a sip of tea. And there we go. And straight away we have a solve error of 0 0.6153. And so that's actually pretty good, and that's the s relatively the same thing that I got um, for my when I was doing it just before this tutorial. And uh, so we could probably get a bit better. Um, so we're going to uh, do a bit more manually um, putting in uh, just some tracks and stuff. This one looks good over here, and just trying to get a better solve error. But remember, less is more. Also, if you're a bit confused to see what this blue line is here, that's basically just the camera motion. Oh, so you see there's quite a lot of motion blur around the sides here. So um, maybe, so you see here, you will have to manually uh, probably adjust it for a few frames. So just using the frame, just carry on frame uh, is quite a good um, option. And also you don't want to be tracking uh, things like on the walls and stuff because uh, they're, if you don't set them as a wall, which we're not going to be going over, uh, then that's going to mess up the floor entirely. Also the main reason why things in the middle are better is usually they don't have as much motion blur. And every now and again just solve the camera motion. Sometimes you get these stupid results like 18.2892. Uh, if that happens, then you can see the blue thing here has gone way too far up. So just um, that might just be a glitch. So usually you just have to solve the camera motion again. There we go. That's much better. 0 0.5057. Okay, I'm not going to try and get it uh, any better. Uh, so 0 0.5057 is actually really good. So now let's start integrating 3D objects. So the way to do this is let's go down and number one we need to set the video this or this image sequence as our background of our camera. So in your layout view it's quite uh, useful to see, to see um, if the 3D objects are uh, fitting in nicely. Right then, so uh, let's just click set as background, and now you see you're going to have your um, camera uh, with the background, and now we do set up tracking scene. So uh, if we make a new view that's going to be called layout, and we go in here, then uh, you see we've got our objects, our light, and our camera. And if we, if we go into motion tracking, you see all of these little points here correspond to one of these points here. So uh, now we need to start orientating our um, orienting our uh, points so it lines up with pretty good perspective. So we're going to click three good ones. So if you want to go to clip display and turn on info, then it's useful to see the solve error. So that's solve error of 0 0.541. So that's not very good. So let's try and find a really good one. Uh, 0 0.685, that's still not very good. You see there are two um, ones in uh, one place, so which one is better? Camera solve, they're virtually the same, so I'm just going to delete one of them so we don't mess up. Uh, so I'm going to choose this one, one in the foreground maybe, so this one, and uh, usually like a triangle sort of thing, so maybe this one. Uh, that's solve error of 7.24, so that's not very good. So let's do this one, this one, and this one that's really good now we just click on floor like that so you see it's gone wildly out and so uh, you want to make sure your your uh, focal length is um, good and uh, blender can also do and blender can also do this automatically 
uh, but usually it's just better to set it. So I think I had a focal length of 33, uh, I think. Uh, something like that, yeah. Uh, so you see it's massively um, too like zoomed in. And the way to fix this is to uh, go to here, find two points. So here and uh, here. And so I know one of these little paving stones here, uh, I, th I think it's like 20 centimeter squared. So what you can do is uh, just guess it really. Uh, so this l distance, go down to geometry. No, not geometry. Uh, go to um, uh, orientation down here. Go to distance, so maybe 1.5 or something, and set scale. And you see now that's uh, much better. So I'm going to delete the cube because I don't like it. <laughs> and uh, let's uh, have a look at our animation, seeing how it's doing. So we can just change where this is, R, Z, rotate a little bit, scale, Y. Just the same old things you would do, like that. Yeah, that looks quite good. And now you can turn X-ray up here to see how it's doing. So usually you want to line it up with certain things. So maybe uh, RZ rotate it. So you've got this uh, plant pot here, and then you see it's sort of virtually lining up with this. So you've got good perspective. Ah, I just had a little break. Go outside, people in quarantine. Go outside. It's a good idea. Actually, I want you to pause the video right now, go outside, have a bit of fresh air in your garden. And if you don't have a garden, then maybe don't because that's your one form of exercise. Anyway, let's have a look through our footage then. Okay, so you see it's very jerky and it's not doing uh, incredibly well. So what we're going to do is we're going to do Alt-G uh, and Alt-R. So we've got the normal rotation, and instead of rotating the plane, we're going to rotate our camera. So we're going to rotate it so it's nicely, G to grab. You shouldn't really be doing this, to be fair, um, because this is going to mess up. This sometimes messes up quite badly. So um, uh, let, let's not do that, and let's just, um, instead of getting our plane, let's delete our plane, and we're just going to add a cube. And uh, let's just uh, go through. So you see, uh, it's not really matching up properly. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to go back to our motion tracking and we're going to fiddle around with our uh, settings here. And I deliberately did that just to show that it doesn't ever really work if you just set it as the distance and floor. Right then, so uh, let's actually um, shift A, add our plane, scale up a bit. So um, n number one, we're going to be se uh, setting an origin. We're just going to find something quite close, so maybe this one, and we're just going to click set origin. So that's going to set this into the center. So you see, it's just basically moved around our camera a little bit. Uh, now we can uh, do set x axes. Uh, so just click on. You see, we have these lines here going like straight down. So let's pretend this is the x axis, and then we'll find uh, one that's going there. So and then do set y axis. That usually doesn't change. And let's go back to our layout now. So now you see we've got much better perspective. And uh, let's just move our camera so it's in position. So and then let's just play through it. We can turn off X-ray mode if that's more helpful. Uh, we kind of want to rotate our camera a little bit, and then you see it's really lining up properly. So like that. And then let's see how well it goes here. So you see it's staying pretty well in the right place here. Uh, let's solve our camera one more time. So go up to the solve camera motion. So you see we get something wildly off here uh, at two point, so almost three. Uh, so we're going to filter tracks again. A filter tracks. Uh, turn the fresh down threshold down to five. Say so delete all of them. So now we've just got some good ones here. A, control L to lock all of them, just so we know they're not, so they're all locked. And I'm going to choose, uh, so now uh, we've got just the ones in the centre. Uh, I think I'm going to detect features again, and you should uh, really have more um, around the outside. If you, It's really not uh, going back a step, because 
uh, you're basically just sort of putting layers and more layers like on a painting like the Mona Lisa basically so you're scrubbing off and putting more on and stuff and the more you do it uh, usually the better your results are so uh, let's have a look at these trackers then once it's gone back to the start remember uh, it does t sometimes take a bit longer at the beginning uh, let's find the one where they tracked from which uh, that one and then let's track forwards there we go and now we're going to filter tracks the same old thing we did I saw a few straddlers going pretty wrong and now we have a solver of 0 0.4474 which is uh, much better than what we had before so uh, now let's go to the start then let's just uh, align this so it's relative going the same place um, RZ bring it up here GY uh, yeah that's pretty good I think I'm going to scale up slightly RZ bring it uh, like that and now let's play so now you see we're getting some really slick results here and uh, it's actually uh, much better than the one so you're going to get better results here than the one that I showed you at the beginning which is actually really exciting so now we've got that uh, we're going to add a few objects so I'm going to add a UV, UV sphere, GZ1, GY bring it across, shade smooth, scale up you're just going to do the same thing that you usually do just doing that sort of thing like that uh, we're going to add a cube no, uh, a cube like that GZ1, uh, just for composition reasons, maybe somewhere there. We can get out of the view here um, so we can align it properly, scale up, GZ1, like that, uh, GY. Okay, so I just messed around with my scene. I added like a sort of monkey that looked like it was sort of leaning against the other two. And I just added a spotlight. But uh, if we go to the camera view, you see it's very obvious that this um, this plane here not transparent and uh, if, even if it was transparent it wouldn't catch all of these shadows here and so I'm going to show you how to do an EV what you could do is uh, go to your object properties go down to visibility and there will be a check, uh, checkbox that says shadow catcher and if you enable that then you've done it really easily but I'm just going to show you how to do it in um, Eevee because it's a bit harder right then so let's add new so we need to split this window into two so um, uh, let's split our window into two like this change this to the shader editor add a new material to here and we don't want the principal BSDF for our shadow catcher so X to delete and we're gonna right off the bat add a mix shader and plug the shader into the surface I'm not really going to um, say why this works or um, or I'm just going to show you what to do so shift a add a transparent uh, BSDF plug that BSDF into the bottom shader shift a add a diffuse BSDF into the top and um, we need to set the color to black okay so the next thing we're going to do shift a we're going to add a color ramp so we'll be able to um, uh, use this color ramp instead of the factor slider here so plug the color into the factor to uh, BW here put the value into the factor and uh, we also want a shader to RGB like that and then we'll plug the color to the color and we're just going to add another diffuse um, at the end like that put the BSDF into the shader and now let's go to here and we're going to add our, just add a spot, spotlight let's say, um, like that, um, <coughs> that should be good. And we want to set our value to um, 100,000, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like that. And you see it's not working because this needs to be a bit further away. So there we go. But you notice that nothing's happening, and this is still just black. And that's because in our um, settings, so if you pull this thing open with N, and you go down to options, our blend mode, so basically um, the thing, so how the light's going to react to it, is on opaque. And if we just change it to alpha blend, 
you see it's gone right away and uh, so now you can um, change adjust this so you get more shadows but I think that's uh, pretty uh, spot on I would say with how the light reacts and if you see this is slightly paler that's because in your background images down here uh, just set the alpha way up and then you can see the uh, how th these things here don't really uh, fit in as well and so the way we can change that is just go to our spotlight and we can change it to something like 500,000 <laughs> whoops that's a bit too much 200,000 might be a bit better there we go and now we can just go through our footage have a look at how it's looking now you see the perspective here uh, isn't very good and it's not close to there so we're going to just um, click, uh, cl shift click on all of these RR rotate so they get a bit better perspective now this is technically cheating because we should really be rotating the camera but that may mess up some of our results so we don't want to do that okay that's working really nicely so let's just do RZ rotate so it's a bit more satisfying because we can try and make it so um, it is lining up with our paving stone here like that you can really just mess around with it as much as you want uh, maybe make the sphere a bit bigger because it's sad it's hiding and then I suppose we are done so now you've done that um, if you want to uh, just change your properties so we can have uh, 30 FPS make sure it's the same as your footage uh, TMP choose somewhere okay so uh, just one last quick tip before um, we finish this tutorial let's say you wanted to have some sort of hole uh, but you didn't want to see the plain bit around it so I just modeled a hole here um, and if we get rid of uh, the thing around it you're going to be able to see the bit underneath it there but you don't really want that do you so what you need to do you need to isolate uh, your two materials, so the so the plane and then uh, your material which is your hole isolate them as two different materials and then this special shader if we delete the principal BSDF and we add something called a holdout and if we just put that into the surface you see it's instantly disappeared so now you see you have some sort of hole integrated and but you don't have the plane around it so it's almost sort of covering up the bit underneath which is the hole okay then so uh great tutorial um hope you all found this really useful comment down below if you want to see more in-depth tutorials on motion tracking uh cgi and um that sort of thing or you want to do more sort of hard surface modeling and making things so i'm going to actually put a poll um, at the end of the video or in the eye uh, I want to see if you want uh, quick snappy tutorials or you want longer in-depth ones like these so hopefully you found this useful uh, uh, if you want uh, leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it or leave a dislike if you didn't like it and I'll see you in the next video goodbye